Spring training continues from the Century Lake Sports Complex in Fort Myers, where this afternoon the Minnesota Twins face the Yankees in Grapefruit League action from South Florida. Welcome to Twins Baseball. I'm Tom Hanneman. The Twins facing the Yankees for the first time this spring today. They won't meet the Yankees in the regular season until mid-June, a four-game series at Target Field. The regular season, it opens two weeks from tomorrow in Baltimore here on Fox Sports North. Corey Provost and Gladden bring you today's game next. Twins and Yankees. <laughs> Century Link Sports Complex Twins taking on the New York Yankees. For the Yankees, their starting lineup, it'll be Brett Gardner leading off play left field. Aaron Hicks will be in center field batting second. Catching batting third, Ryan McCann. Chase Headley will bat fourth, play third base. Dustin Ackley will be at first base batting fifth. Kristen Orfeo will DH bat sixth. Pete Cosmo will be the shortstop batting seventh. Ronald Torres will be at second base. He'll bat eighth and batting ninth in right field. Ben Gamble pitching for the Yankees here this afternoon. 17 starts last year. He had a record of six wins and 11 losses. It'll be Ivan Nova. Here's the starting lineup for your Minnesota Twins. It'll be Brian Dozier at second base leading off. Joe Maurer will bat second, play first base. Miguel Sano will be in right field, batting third, batting fourth, third base with Trevor Plouffe. Eddie Rosario in left field bats fifth. Young Ho Park will be at first base batting six. I'm sorry, he will DH in bat six. Eduardo Escobar will be at shortstop batting seventh, batting eighth catching. John Ryan Murphy and Byron Buxton will be in center field. Buxton bats nine pitching for Minnesota. His third start will be right under Irvin Santana. Umpires fielding cold breath will be calling balls and strikes. Ryan Honora at first base. Jeff Kellogg, the umpire at second base. Marvin Hudson will be the umpire at third base. Sellout crowd here. A little bit of a breeze going out to left center field. The Yankees in town. And there's a big buzz. And to get you started, here's Corey Provis. Hi, Danny. Thank you. Urban Santana. Just a few more warm-up tosses before this game gets underway. 
Turner and Fort Myers. Twins and the Yankees. These two teams will meet a week from today. Up I-75 at Legends Field in Tampa. Santana today for the Twins and Ivan Nova going for the Yankees. New York last year, 87 wins. They lost 75. The two wild card teams. They hosted the wild card game and were shut out by Dallas Keuchel and the Astros. So one and done for the Yankees last year after ending a two-year postseason drought. This Yankees team, a loaded lineup once again. CC Sabathia has struggled all spring. His spot on the rotation is not really secured. We'll talk about that. As we kind of move along today, the guy pitching for the Yankees, Ivan Nova, he's competing for the number five spot with CC Sabathia. Irvin Santana will make his third official start of the spring. Did throw in a minor league game last week, facing Brett Gardner. Move for five so far, the early going here in the spring, and he looks at a fastball strike with that underway. We're in Fort Myers. And Gardner slowed with injury. Early on in camp, so hasn't seen too much action. And the 0-1 inside edge, a fastball missing from Irvin at 91 miles per hour. One ball, one strike. Old friend Aaron Hicks in jersey number 31 is on deck. Santana from the windup and the 1-1. And on the ground right side, scooped on a line by Mauer. Did catch it in the air. So Mauer playing off the bag at first, went down and caught it to the backhand side, and it just hit the leather before the dirt. So lining out Gardner, one down for Hicks. Hicks in center field today. And Danny, he may see some more time there with of a scary situation for Jacoby Ellsbury yesterday hit on his wrist in a game against the Braves. Good news for the Yankees. All the x-rays came back negative, but for the time being, Hicks will see some more reps in center with Gardner in left. And he's a good one. Gardner, you talked about, you know, Gardner being kind of pushed back a little bit. He's getting the late start in spring, but he's only going to need probably the last couple of weeks to camp to get ready to go. But this guy here, Hicks, I think that's what they got him for. Uh, with the injuries from, from Ellsbury to Beltron, Steven Gardner, you've got a guy here in Hicks that can fill in nicely for these guys. Hicks ahead of Santana, 2-0. And, oh, and the pitch is chopped up the first baseline and foul, 2-1. and one. I saw Aaron just outside the batting cages today. The first thing I noticed, clean shaven. No goatee. Clean shaven Aaron Hicks. Policy with the Yankees that facial hair like that. I think you can maybe have a mustache, but it's got to be somewhat cleaned up. And he doesn't mind. He's got a Yankee uniform on. First round pick, Hicks, 26 years old. The check swing looked like he went. Off speed, he did. Two and two. Hicks has homered once here in the spring. That home run came against David Price down the street at JetBlue Park last week. 11 home runs in 97 games with the Twins a year ago. And the 2-2 is tapped foul. Got a piece of John Ryan Murphy, former Yankee. In fact, Hicks batting, Murphy catching. These two were traded for one another this offseason. Murphy coming over from New York. And Hicks now in the Bronx. Ryan McCann is on deck. Irvin from the windup. And the 2-2 chopped foul on the first base side. Off speed that time for Santana. Santana won seven last year. 17 starts after serving his suspension. And his Twins debut in early July. And he finished 2015 in great fashion. A strong September. And again, the 2-2 on his hands, and he grounds one wide of first. Mauer feels this one, takes it to the bag unassisted. And that is out number two. Good pitch, Danny, running inside, all up on Hicks's hands. And he grounds out weakly to Mauer. And I was watching Santana, and still a learning curve for Murphy, the catcher, to kind of focus in on what these pitchers like to do in certain situations, what they like to throw. And I watched Santana, and he kind of... Shook him off a couple, and he wanted to come in with that little cutter in on the hands. So two down for Brian McCann, who has hit at least 20 home runs in eight straight years. Hit 26 home runs last year. Drove in 94 runs. Twins have the shift on. Three defending right of second as the Santana fastball runs high. Ball one. 
Uh, Brian McCann will start behind the play, but there is a battle going on to back up McCann. And a 1-0 is down and inside. Two balls and no strikes. Austin Romine is an option. Guy that is here today, young player Gary Sanchez. He's in the conversation as well. We may see him later on. And the 2-0, grounded to the shift. To his left, the shortstop Escobar will glove it. He throws out. The batter McCann to end the inning. That was Trevor Plouffe who made the play. Plouffe went over. Escobar stayed at short, and Trevor shifted from third to the right side. He made the play 5-3, inning over. So Santana works a 1-2-3 first. We played one half. In Fort Myers, Yankees nothing. Twins coming up on your home for Twins Baseball. today in Fort Myers overcast skies twins in the red tops white pants back for the first time Brian Dozier having a great spring hitting over 400 he's over twice leads off against Ivan Nova and Nova pumps in a fastball strike about bell tie at 91 nothing and one on Dozier twins all-star second baseman leads the team in hits so far in the Grapefruit League Yankees shift three left of second and the 0-1 has tapped up the third base line and foul Nothing at two on Brian Dozier. Joe Maurer batting second. Miguel Sano hitting third. It's a lineup that we could very well see in April 4 in Baltimore. We swap out, I think, Murphy for Suzuki, but everybody else, this could be the way it looks in just a few weeks. 0 and 2 on Dozier. And Nova's pitch runs outside at 87. Nova's sinker, curve, four seam, and Mix in a rare changeup. Nova returned in 2015 after Tommy John surgery. On the windup, and now the one two down and away. Two balls and two strikes. Nova made 17 starts. ERA was high, it was over five. His last six starts, September into October, his ERA was in the mid sixes. He has thrown the ball well so far here in the Grapefruit League. And the 2-2 off-speed. Dozier swings and pops it up. Back of short. And who calls it? The shortstop will come in and catch on the dirt. That's Pete Cosmo, the former Cardinal. He'll grab it for out number one. So Danny, as we mentioned, in the top half of the first inning, Nova by no means guaranteed of a spot in this Yankees rotation. As he is competing with the guy who's been around a long time in CC Sabathia. You know, and I guess with Girardi and Cashman, the general manager and the manager have said it's going to be the best five guys. I So whoever I guess is pitching well, the other then might go to the bullpen. I cannot see CC Sabathia pitching out of the bullpen, something he has never done. 
Bauer takes a strike. Fastball hit the outside corner. Joel in the two hole today. He's knocked in three in the spring after hitting 10 home runs last year. Drove in 66 runs. No score. Bottom one. And the 0 1. Skips in the dirt. And a piece of McCann. It's a 1 1 count. Notice Bauer's not wearing glasses today. Kind of an overcast. And he had talked about experimenting wearing glasses day games here, but I think with the overcast, guys really don't affect him as much. Outfield plays Maurer the opposite way. Headley off third. And the 1 1. Down it inside. Ball two. And the shortstop Cosma plays Maurer up the middle, still defending slightly left of second base, but now will shift over almost directly behind the bag. Whereas Headley at third base is positioned in the hole at short. Base is empty, one down, Sano on deck. And Nova's 2 1, ball three inside. That one skipped away from McCann as well. Nova last year walked about three men per nine, struck out six in that same span. 6'5, 235 pounds from the Dominican Republic, Ivan Nova. Waits 3 1. And the pitch he takes. Strike two. Joe is set to take off the shin guard. 92 down and inside, but caught the edge. So now it's full on Joe 3 and 2. And over the side. And the payoff. Ground ball fouled on the first base side. Yankees have the navy blue dark tops, gray pants, multicolored cap, as do all the teams down here in the spring. New York and block letters on the front. The cap, navy blue on the back, kind of a light gray on the front. Full count on Joe. And the payoff is shot to the shift, right side, second baseman. This is Torres. He gloves knee high and he throws out on him. So a lengthy at bat, but. Nova retires Maurer. Two up, two down. Base is empty for Miguel Sano. All right, another thing you might see on the Yankees uniform this year, they're sporting the number eight in honor of Yogi Berra, passing of Yogi. So I'm sure that they're going to be many times they're going to honor Yogi during the course of the year. Now, we mentioned last time we saw Sano bat. Do you recall teams overshifting, playing that defensive shift? Well, the Yankees will play Sano you know, to pull on the infield. Torres, Cosma, Headley, all defending left of second base as Miguel checks his swing and they appeal down to first. He went a slider, nothing in one. Hey, you talk about the shift on a young kid like Sano. I think that a lot of teams are shifting now rather quickly. They had not seen that shift they had on Maurer. Three of the guys on the right side. And the 0 1 is up and inside. Usually they'll shift it around the other way. Maurer going the other way. So against Maurer, they had that third baseman over the shortstop position. So see how that is during the year. Maurer can punt. No score in the first. And the 1 1 off speed shot wide of third. Headley will glove it on two hops. And the third baseman throws out Sano and Nova with a 1 2 3 first inning. We have played one. No score on your home for Twins Baseball.
nothing nothing game after one. Scoreless first innings for both Urban Santana and Ivan Nova. Chase Headley, the gold glove of the Padres back in 2012. Third baseman, he takes down low ball one from the Twins right-hander Santana. Corey and Danny upstairs, we're joined now by Twins pitcher Tommy Malone. And we thank Tommy for joining us from inside the Twins dugout. And the 1-0 pitch is tapped. Fair back towards the mound, picked up by Santana, lobs and throws out. The runner Headley won away. Tommy, thanks for the time. How are you? Absolutely. Doing well. How about you guys? Well, yesterday was kind of a chaotic day. You, you made the trip up to Bradenton, but the uh, weather intervened. How did you kind of get through it? And, and in the end, when the bus came back, did you get your work in yesterday? Yeah. Um, you know, definitely not the ideal situation uh, you want to be in. But, you know, I still had to get my work in, trying to stay on schedule. So I had to throw yesterday one way or another. So the what we did was came back here. Um, and just I threw on the half field just uh, uh, no hitters uh, Molly and Joe Vavra st uh, stood in for me obviously didn't swing but um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know Molly would probably get a hit though down low on Dustin Ackley one ball one strike Yankees batting in the second those sim games yes you can get your work in but, but they're not nearly the same right no I mean si a simulated game actually wouldn't be as bad but you know you have two guys standing in that aren't you know that aren't swinging it's it's a lot different um, but you know I, I try to treat it as as much as I can just like a game uh, and kind of go all out as if you know it was a real game so um, you know I got my work in and you know hopefully you know next time I'll be able to get out on the, on the mountain and face some hitters Ackley taps out weekly tomorrow quickly two down but Tommy, I wanted to ask you a little bit about the, the, Neil Allen's been talking about the, the changeup, and that's something that he says you've kind of all, uh, mastered right now, and that's been kind of a, a to-go-to pitch for you right now. Yeah, absolutely. I feel like um, pretty much ever since I became a pitcher, you know, I've always been able to throw strikes, and you know, the one thing that I've been able to do is is have a decent changeup. Um, the last couple of years, I feel like it hadn't been as good uh, as it has been in the past. But, you know, I feel like I, I feel confident in it. Um, and I've always really felt confident that I could throw for strikes in any count. Um, it's just this year I'm just kind of not worrying about it. Just kind of have the grip and just throw it and just kind of let it do what it's going to do. Um, and naturally have that arm side run. Um, and that's what makes it effective. Um, kind of working off the two seam that I throw as well. And, you know, I think that's the that's the biggest thing is as, as long as I can command the zone with my fastball, I think it makes the change up that much better. Slider runs outside, a ball and two strikes on the D.H. Chris Norfia. The Cubs last year had three home runs. Norfia, 35 years old. That's from the right side. Nothing, nothing game in the second. Bases empty, two outs. Santana brings that red glove right near the bill of his cap, and now time called. Visiting with Tommy Malone from the Twins dugout. And now the 1 2 down and inside. 2 and 2 the count. Now well, this competition, Tommy, that's going on here in camp for that number five. You've been, though, in this spot before, right? Just battling for a spot on the team? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I feel like deja vu from last year a little bit. Um, but you know what? It's like you just said, it's, it's something that I've been through almost every spring training. And it's something I just got to kind of move forward with. Slider swing and a miss to Norfi is gone. Santana perfect through two. Tommy, can you stick around for one more half? Absolutely. Now we'll come back more with Tommy next. No score bottom two coming up on your home for Twins Baseball.
But today at the CenturyLink Sports Complex, nothing, nothing game. Plouffe lines one to short of base hit. First pitch swing and Trevor Plouffe pulls a single over the head of Pete Cosma into left field. So Twins have their first base runner. A leadoff knock for Trevor. Sitting nearly 320 so far here in the spring. We continue our chat with Tommy Malone. I want to go back to last season if we can. When you were sent down in early May last year, you went to AAA, you could have moped, you could have pouted, but you put up almost video game-esque numbers. What did you take away from that that demotion, if you will, and how did that kind of lift you to have a productive 2015 big league season? Uh, you know, I kind of used it as motivation. Um, you know, I felt like there there were some things that I, that I needed to iron out, and obviously that's, that's probably... Uh, as Rosario lines one to right, so back-to-back -back singles. It was back-to-back -back first pitch swinging. Bloop and now Rosario, two on, nobody out. Go ahead, Tommy. Sorry about that. Yeah, no problem. Um, that's probably the the place to do it. You know, to, if, you're, if you have some issues, you know, mechanically or, or whatever it is, um, you know, getting sent down to AAA obviously isn't the ideal situation, but, you know, I was able to to go down there and, and be more aggressive and not try to nibble around the corners. I think that was the biggest issue. Um, you know, just too many walks there early in the year. Um, so I, I used that time to go down and, and kind of be myself again, come back more aggressive, and then kind of um, do the same thing when I got back up here. So two on, nobody out. Young Hole Park. Getting three home runs so far in the spring. He's knocked in nine. He takes off speed outside ball one. Loof at second base, Rosario at first, no score in the second. Young Hole overall this spring is hitting 323. Yankees infield is back at double play depth. Nova from the stretch, you glance back towards second. And deals home 1 0, went off speed, missed inside ball two. Tommy, you had a chance here at this park bats right now, a new addition here. He seems to fit in well with this ball club. What are you seeing with him and his presence in this clubhouse? Honestly, you know, great attitude, obviously loves the game, you know, likes to be out here working with, you know, whatever coaches are out here working, um, you know, wants to learn. And you you obviously see it. Obviously, he didn't get off to the best of starts in his first game. But, you know, ever since then, he's kind of been on fire. So um, it's fun to see. Um, you know, obviously, he, he loves to come to the park every day. He's got a smile on his face. And he just loves being here. And that's, that's exactly what you want to see. Mark taps one foul behind the plate. Eduardo Escobar on deck. Two balls and one strike on Park. DH in today. Luke at second. Rosario at first. And a pitch swing and a man's fastball. At 92, it's even now two and two. How much does a guy like John Ryan Murphy pick your brain here in camp? Um, well, we haven't really had the, uh, the pleasure to work too much. Uh, my very first game, he was the one who caught me in. After that, it's, it, I mean, I, I don't even think I've thrown a bullpen to him. But, um, you know, he's he's great in, in the clubhouse, you know, very outspoken guy. You know, we talk all the time. Um, and he's just one of those guys that, you know, he wants to learn. Obviously, as a catcher, a new catcher coming in, that's that's obviously a good thing. You want to learn all the pitchers. It's not a definitely not an easy task to come in as a new catcher and, and try to learn the whole pitching staff, especially in spring training. you got so many pitchers, but um, I think he's he's done a good job, and I think he's going to continue to do a good job throughout the whole season. Which misses outside and low, so a 3-2 count, and Park draws a walk. So the bases are loaded now for Eduardo Escobar. He's over, knocked in two so far in the spring. We're chatting with Tommy Malone. So when is your next turn to throw? When do you go next? I believe Thursday. So I would have thrown it yesterday, it was Saturday, so Thursday, yeah. Next time out, I mean, I guess you didn't get a chance to pitch in a game yesterday. Do you want to get that pitch count number up to 60 or 70, 75 around there? Well, I threw 75 yesterday. Okay. It was a simulated five innings or and 75 pitches. Um, that was what it, should, what it would have been in a regular game as well. Um, so next time out, obviously it wasn't game situation, so not as stressful um, on your arm and, you know, not as stressful situation. So I think, I don't know if we'll get up to 90 in the next time out, but somewhere above 75, I believe. Strike one to Escobar. Yeah, the 0-1 ground ball to the right side. This is glove by the second baseman. Second throw on the return throw on the first night of time. The run scores. Bloop is in. Fielder's choice RBI for Eduardo Escobar. Rosario out. 
I should say Rosario down to third. Park out at second base. It's one nothing Twins. Runners at first and third, one out. And the batter is former Yankee John Ryan Murphy. Tommy, I think you need to talk to Paul Mahler because if you're going to pitch Thursday, that's the trip over to Jupiter. And just looking back here, <laughs> I think you've been, have you pitched at this ballpark yet? Or all your starts have been on the road? <laughs> yesterday you were in Bradenton. Uh, you went well, to Jupiter too. Technically, I did pitch yesterday here. Oh, okay. that doesn't count though. But I did. I did have one game. Uh, my second start was here, uh, three inning stint. But yeah, uh, I feel like a road warrior this year. Uh, I think they hand awards for that. <laughs> Absolutely. I hope so. Well, maybe they just like the food you buy. I guess you have to purchase the food for to get on the bus. <laughs> uh, Eddie uh, Rosario at third base. Escobar at first. one nothing Twins in the second. John Ryan Murphy has a couple of hits so far in the spring as Nova checks on. Escobar back in safely. Do you like the Reds? Twins are sporting red tops uh, this year. Going to wear them on Fridays at home. Do you like that look? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I was kind of a fan of them last year. And I think, how much do we have them for batting practice, I think? Yeah. And I thought it was definitely a good look. So I'm glad that we brought those on board. Nova misses down low, two balls and no strikes. Time will let you go with that, but thanks for the time and best of luck the rest of the way down here. Absolutely, guys. Thank you very much. And Tommy Malone pitching very well here in camp as he is fighting for that number five spot of the Twins rotation. Unable to make that start yesterday in Bradenton due to rain. Count here for Murphy to attack. First and third, one out, two and all the count. And the pitch, he swings and shops from the hole in short. Headley gloves. Second for one, the return throw on to first, and Murphy beat it out. Rosario scores. Fielder's choice RBI for John Ryan Murphy. The Twins have a 2 0 lead here in the second. Now put the ball in play right there. Nova kind of getting what he wanted, and that was a ground ball, but a couple of guys hustling down the line. That's Murphy's first RBI of the spring, and now Byron Buxton, his first game action. In several days, as Byron was out due to flu-like symptoms, and he stares at a curveball for a strike. Now Byron was set to be in center yesterday, bad leadoff before the game got rained out, batting ninth in center today. He's had 20 at bats, four hits. Under at first, two outs, twins by two, and the 0-1. Ground ball to short. Cosmo Fields, who'll go the short way to second for the force on Murphy in time, inning over. Twins, though, get a couple of runs on two hits. They leave one. And after two, it now reads Twins 2, New York nothing on your home for Twins Baseball.
Santana has faced the minimum through two. Ground ball out so far for the Twins right-hander. Lower third coming up for the Yankees. Pete Cosma, longtime St. Louis Cardinal. The 18th overall pick by St. Louis back in 2007. Leads off Cosma short. Defensively today. Twins lead two zip. Urban Santana pumps it a fastball missing down low. Ball one. I want to welcome in a special guest joining us here for this half inning. We say good afternoon to Wendy Schnapp, owner of Tarpon Bay Explorers. Good afternoon. 1-0 is out the corner for a strike. Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us. And uh, Wendy again from Tarpon Bay Explorers, the concessionaire to the J.N. Ding Darling National Wildlife Refuge on Sanibel Island. That sounds fancy. It's fabulous. One ball, one strike on Cosmo. And he checks in a slider to not chase it. Ball two. What is that, exactly does that entail? Tell so, us about your job. Tarpon Bay Explorers is the concessionaire for the refuge, which means that we provide a lot of the visitor services. We do recreational equipment rentals, kayaks, paddle boards, boats, and educational tours on all those things, trams, boats, fishing, lots of fun. And the 2-1 missed outside of fastball at 93, 3-1. So anything you want to do on water, looky up. Absolutely. And you're going to see, I assume, wildlife and everything out there, every species? We see a lot. We see dolphins and manatees, lots of different birds, over 250 different species of birds that, that visit our refuge. And one is inside ball four for a space runner, lead off walk to Cosmo. And, of course, alligators. What you see, does it matter what time of year you travel, what time of year you go out in the water? Do you see different species throughout uh, the year? There are differences throughout the year. For example, dolphins, we see them pretty much every day all throughout the year. Manatees, for about nine months, we see them every day. And then during the coldest three months, they'll be kind of in and out, here for a week, gone for a week kind of thing. They go to the power plant when the water gets too cold. Ronald Torrey is the batter. Torrey is the second base today. He's claimed off waivers from the Angels. This offseason, he takes down low for a ball. Torrey has played three different leagues last year for three different organizations. Houston, Dodgers, Blue Jays. Double-A and triple-A. Had eight games with the Dodgers, though, last year. It's three for 19 in the spring. And the pitch is a belt tie fastball for a strike. It's a 1-1 count. It mentions here that there's different uh, types of tours. What, uh, what kind of different tours that somebody expect? Sure, we do cruises, our nature and sea life cruise, which includes a touch tank exhibit where you can learn all about the marine life, and then we go out on the water and look for dolphins, manatees, birds. We do the tram tours. Tram's very educational about the different environments out on Sanibel. Good chance to see alligators on that one. We offer fishing charters, so we can go out, we catch a lot of trout, redfish, snook, snapper, jacks. And then kayak and paddleboard tours are the most active ones if you want to get out and get some exercise while you're out there looking for the wildlife and learning about the estuary. One two is inside, just missed exactly where Murphy was set up. On the off-speed pitch, and Santana just missed the inside corner, so two and two on Torres. Cosmo at first in the third Yankees batting. Twins lead 2-0. Nobody out, Ben Gamble on deck. The right fielder. Santana has walked one, struck out one, and the pitch is chopped to the right side. To his left, Dozier, a sliding stop, and he can't glove it as it goes into right field. And Dozier on his feet. Maybe if he stays on his feet, he can track that ball down, but Danny, I'm not sure if he attempted the slide or lost his footing, hit his body, and then carried out into right field. Uh, Dozier does one of the better just slide pop-ups, and I'm not sure if he was trying to get into position to maybe try to field it and get the out at second base, but... There was a stumble by Dozier, and he kind of fell down. It was as a base hit, so Cosma to second. Torrey is at first, and now Ben Gamble. A strong offensive and defensive year at AAA last year. Scranton Wilkes-Barre for the Yankees. Tenth-round pick back in 2010. Visiting with Wendy Schnapp, owner of Tarpon Bay Explorers. So many great things to do down here in southwestern Florida. Baseball, the activities. But you mentioned, Wendy, the stand-up paddleboarding. That's a big craze right now, isn't it? It's a big craze. That's our, our newest addition to our fleet is the paddle boards. We've had them for about five years. And uh, it's a great way to get good exercise. And it's a wonderful vantage point when you're standing up on the board. Line to right, Sano to his left. And Sano drops the ball in the corner. 
The runners will move up only one base as the throw comes back in, missing the cutoff man and skipping off the mound. Sano went to his left, had the glove out, and could not make the play. Did not have to die for that ball. And some hook on it towards the line, but Sano was there. Stretching out a bit, and Danny just missed it. The Yankees have the bases loaded for the top of the order in Gardner. Yeah, he's going to be charged with an error out there in right field, but uh, just watching his route, he kind of a little bit of a snake route. And also, it looked like he was thinking about diving for it and then realized, I don't have to. And by then, he tried to correct that route he was on and reach out and hit off the heel of his glove. So, Sano, the error. Cosma to third, to Reyes at second. And now Gardner lined out to Maurer to begin the ball game today. Twins lead 2 nothing, but New York threatening as Santana runs a changeup outside for ball one. How rough is the water when fans will, you know, partake in the stand-up paddleboarding? Are the waters cooperative? Tarpon Bay is a wonderful place to learn stand-up paddleboarding because it's only about four feet deep and it's very calm. If the wind is over about 15 miles an hour, we don't go out. So it's a very great place to learn, and then you can go tackle the waves on the other side afterwards. Wait, is it priced right for families to come out there and be able to participate? It's a great place to bring families. In fact, there was a family from Minnesota out yesterday fishing. you got to say it right. It's Minnesota. Minnesota. <laughs> uh, the little girl in the family, I think she was probably seven years old, she caught a 42-inch bonnet head shark. Wow. Just made their trip. They'll be coming back. They will be coming back. Santana misses outside. Two balls at one strike on Gardner. Hicks on deck. We have double kayaks, so those are great for families because even the smaller kids can participate and they can help as much or as little as, as they want to. Santana and the Twins in a jam and the 2-1. Down and inside, ball three. I understand this time of year, too, if you're trying to go out on the water, parking can be tough. Is parking pretty we manageable have, where you're at? We have enough parking at the refuge for our activities. We've uh, had to get creative in the last few years. So the trams, for example, you go get your tickets at the Education Center, and then we send you across the street to the reserve tram parking um, where there's plenty um, for everybody. Carter bounces fall, full count three and two. Wendy, how did you get involved in this? Where was your... Where, I, how old were you when you just got there? My background, I'm from Illinois, and I have degrees in biology and biochemistry. But I don't like the cold. So I moved down here not really knowing what I was going to do and found my dream job. Love it. I've been doing this for 15 years. What part of Illinois are you from? I'm from the south suburbs of Chicago. Went to school in Champaign-Urbana. 3-2 bounce foul. So Illinois fan? Sure. Regalina? Sure. And Cubs fan. <laughs> <laughs> but I like the Twins. Good answer. 3-2 <laughs> and two the answer. Down on Gardner. Great answer. Oh, I like it. She travels around with her own bartender, huh? How about that? <laughs> we got to get that in our contract. Yeah. A lengthy second, or a third, rather, for Santana. The Twins, though, have not played great defense this half inning. So three and two on Gardner. And again, the payoff, he walked. Miss missing side ball. Four run is in. Second walk is in. It's an RBI for Gardner, 2-1 game. Bases are still loaded, nobody out, and Aaron Hicks will bat with that. We'll say thank you to Wendy. Enjoyed our visit today. Best of luck to you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Uh, Wendy Schnapp, owner of Tarpon Bay Explorers, we thank her for stopping by. So many great things to do, but by all means, look up Wendy and her great team. Tarpon Bay Explorers, if you're making the trip down here to southwest Florida. Hicks bounced out to Maurer. As bad, in fact, as Santana ran a pitch right in his hands. His first time, he'll swing and sky one to center field. Buxton back. He'll have a play. Buxton will square his shoulders and make the catch. Tagging and scoring from third is Torres. And the runners move up second and third as well. He'll tie the game 2 2. Hicks a sack fly RBI. Fourth RBI this spring for Hicks. Gamble to third, Gardner down to second. So one out. Game tied at two. And here is McCann. The Yankees a year ago, second in the league in runs scored, fourth in home runs. They also didn't strike out too often. Second fewest strikeouts as an offense last year. Yeah, but one out, McCann grounds one, two, Maurer, he'll field it, stumbles behind the bag, a run will score as Joe takes the out to first. 
So three straight RBIs. Gardner Hicks and now McCann in New York has a 3-2 lead down to third. Goes Gardner as McCann knocks in Gamble. Unearned run there as Gamble reached on the fielding error by Sano. So the Yankees lead by one, three, two, two outs in the third as Santana pumps in the strike. Went off speed on the outside corner, change up to Headley. Irvin was hopeful about, still is, trying to get about 75 pitches in today. He's at 45 through two and two thirds. And now the 0 1. Change up again. That one missed. Got it away. One ball, one strike. Headley 11 home runs with the Yankees last year. And the 1 1. Down low. A fastball 2 and 1. Danny Irvin's been behind a lot, too, this half inning. Yes, the Twins' defense has not been stellar this half inning, but he's also been behind, it seems like, every batter. Yeah, he is uh, struggling right now with that fastball and trying to get it over strike one, that good sink on it. 2-1, cracked to the ground to Maurer. Two hopper, fields near his knee, will take it to the bag, getting over. But the Yankees score three runs. On only one hit, a couple of walks, and error, they leave one. After two and a half now, it reads New York 3, Twins 2 on your home for Twins baseball. Yankees scored three in the third. Only one is earned. He's now batting in the third, trailing by 1-3-2. Top of the order, Dozier, Maurer, Sano. His right-hander, Ivan Nova. And Dozier stares at a strike. A fastball. Nothing in one. Dozier popped out of the shortstop. Cosma. His first time up. Dozier, 28 home runs last year. Drove in 77 runs. And the 0-1 swung on, sky to left. Gardner with a play. Back maybe two steps in one. Makes a cap high catch. And Dozier is on number one. Well, theme nights are back. In 2016, packages include a game ticket and the exclusive giveaway item. Returning favorites feature a Star Wars night with a ploof Skywalker bobblehead. Well, new theme nights include Carew's Corner, Wrestling Night. So many options there and more. See the full lineup at twinsbaseball.com slash theme nights. One away for Joe Maurer. Bounced out his first time. 3-2 Yankees in the third. Nova's 35th pitch is on the way and cracked over the mound behind the bag at second. Cosmo positioned well. The shortstop throws out Joe. So two up and two down. 
enjoyed our visit with Wendy Schnapp. And speaking of weather down here, say goodbye to winter and Minnesota and report to spring training on the beaches of Fort Myers and Sanibel. Experience Florida's most natural beaches and islands at fortmyersanibel.com. Two away for Sano. He bounced out to Headley. His first time up, righty against righty. And the slider misses outside, ball one. FortMyersSanibel.com is the website. So much to do down here. Of course, we always talk to players, say, okay, we've had enough spring training. Let's, let's do we, we want to kind of get ready for the season, but are you ready for that yet? Are you still enjoying the, the beaches and I the am. islands and the food? I am. I'm still, uh, I still got enough left to stick around here for a few more days. Baseball. Water, food. Now the weather's just been fantastic, other than yesterday. One, one is down low ball, too. We know some spring breaks begin next week and then the following week as well. So we'll see you down here. Still plenty of time to get down here. Good baseball, good weather, a lot to do. Two balls and one strike out to know the pitch outside ball three. You can make a case that the baseball is better now. And that the guys yeah. you figure will be on the team are going to be in there longer, get more bats. You know, Tommy Malone talked about it. He's 75 pitches in a kind of a simulated situation, not the same. But yeah, these guys need to get start getting stretched out. A three one inside. He walked in ball four. And a sinker that stayed up and in. So Sano coaxes a two on walk. Second walk issued by Nova. Boy, some teams do it a little bit different. They like to have their guy at least pitch 100 pitches prior to them leaving spring training. There's other organizations will like to have have their guy maybe their last outing go 75, 80 pitches. So therefore, that next start would get him into the 90 pitch, 100 pitch range. So they, they, they kind of still working up to that pitch count during the season. Strike on Trevor Blue. Fastball at the knees. Trevor singled and scored back at the Twins two run second. Snow at first, two outs. 3 2 New York in the third. Eddie Rosario would bat if this half inning continues. And the 0 1. Good. Strike two. Kind of buckling Trevor. Also, the location was solid as well. Down and away. McCann. Did not have to frame that one at all. 0 2. It appears that Masahiro Tanaka will be the Yankees opening day starter. And the 0-2, a check swing, strike three. That one somewhat delayed and called by Fielding Colbert behind the plate. First strikeout for Nova ends the Twins third. We are 3-3. Twins do not score, they leave one. It's 3-2 New York on your home for Twins baseball.
This portion of Twins Baseball is brought to you by your local Chevy dealers. See your local Chevy dealer or log on to ChevyDealer.com. Fourth is underway. Here's Danny. Well, thank you, Corey. Good afternoon, everybody. It'll be Dustin Ackley. First pitch into first strike as Urban Santana rocks and fires. And this is up and away. One ball, one strike. Ackley right now, they say, is going to be the backup to Teixeira at first base. Former Seattle Mariner. And this one's lifted into shallow center field. Dozier out. Buxton in. And it's going to be Dozier calling and catching. So Ackley 0 for 2 here this afternoon. And here's Chris Denorfia in camp non-roster. The invitee, he was with the Cubs last year, and boy, did not do too much with him, even though he did play in 103 ball games. A defensive specialist. He's played with the Padres, several teams, but an insurance in that he's in camp with the Yankees. The start is the DH. Takes this one down and away, ball one. Glad to see our good buddy Kip Elliott. In attendance here, down there in the president's suite right now, in front row next to the dugout. He is looking dapper today. And a late call strike to Denorfi evens it up one ball, one strike. And you know he's here in a more capacity yes. because he's in pants. Yep. Otherwise, we'd see Kip sandals and shorts. Yep. And tapper foul near the Twins dugout. It's not really a Jekyll and Hyde thing, but it's not too far off from that, right? Well, that's how yeah. we know that he is either it, it, it's on official business or he's taking a day off. And he was his attire everywhere. He kind of displays that. He has a soda pop going. And it's busy. Pitch down and in the dirt. Can't stop by Murphy. And now two balls, two strikes. See him tonight. The big gathering tonight. Big We're gathering tonight. Sponsors. In office folks in town for a great get together. So just good. For you, never. And a 2 2 ground ball, shortstop. Escobar waits for it, feels it, and retires to Murphy at two down. If there was one, would you even listen to it? Well, I'd like to know what the what the dress code is. Yeah, if it's going to be, you know, theme night, you know, if it's a Tommy Bahama type night or. You know, tie thing top hat and tails Danny that's what I'm going with tonight well you won't see me there <laughs> you know where I'd get that stuff two down bases empty three two Yankees Twins led two to nothing after two Yankees got three runs on just one hit Mr. Cosmo's in there for a strike it's bullpen quiet Santana maybe get into the fifth inning Count at 57. Shakes off Murphy a couple of times and now ready to go. And a pitch big swing and a miss came after him. Santana's looked sharp. He did walk two in that three run third inning. Sano was charged with an error. Video two. Strike three, boy. Nice breaking ball. Wasted real time. And locked him up. Three up, three down here to the top of the four. Second strikeout for Santana. So after three and a half, Yankees up three and two on your home for baseball.
Pirates. The Twins taking on the Yankees. Leading off will be Eddie Rosario. Young Hope Park and Eduardo Escobar. He's trailing 3-2. to two. Escobar, they hit his first time up. Came around and scored on a ground out by Murphy. Takes this one in there for a strike. Headley weighing on the grass at third, taking that bunt away. And this one's pulled into the dugout of the Yankees. No balls and two strikes. Last half anyway, we're talking about Kip Elliott. An official capacity here today in his long pants, nice shirt. Found out he didn't have a ticket for that seat. He got booted. Usher's had to come down and politely escort him out, so we apologize. Should I have a ticket? I would think. I would think so. There's a line drive. That's going to fall in for a base hit in front of Hicks in center. It's on an 0-2 pitch. Rosario laces a single in the center. Tied run on it first. Rosario, this is the part of spring training you hope to start seeing some of the guys that will steal during the season. Maybe make an attempt right now. The Twins have struggled with that part of the game, Danny. It hasn't just been a year or two, it's been a while now. The Twins just have not been a great running team in regards to stealing bases. Rosario is a guy that probably could steal you 20 bases during the year. In 2012, they did. 2012, and they had. Ben Revere and Alexi Casilla, that was a group that would run. The Twins, in fact, led the American League in stolen bases that year, but not since. And you look at this roster, I'm not sure top to bottom. They do have Dozier can run a little bit. Rosario definitely can run. Fastball up and into Park. Of course, Buxton has you know, some of the best speed in the game. Yes. The key for him is to get on base and be able to use that, especially... Uh, the scoreboard can dictate if he should be running or not. This guy here, Park, he runs fairly well for a big guy. He had 10 stolen bases last year. Rosario, good lead. One ball, no strikes. Not running, and the pitch fouled right back. Good cut. There's so many things that go into play right now this time of the year in spring training. A couple of weeks left, but you know, the scouting report, how are we going to pitch Park right now? The Baltimore Orioles have seen him a little bit, but also, you know, the scouts will start coming to the ball games now and start scouting the players as to how to pitch these guys, how to defend them. And Ovid trying to win a job in the Yankees rotation. Got a one and one sets at the belt. And a pitch, strike on the inside corner. Park kind of jackknife back out of the way, but caught the inside corner. Starting pitchers watch any video of opposing hitters in spring training. What do you think they wait till to the regular season to start you doing know, that part? I, I would think that they would wait till the start of the season, or they might go in and look at maybe the mechanics of their pitching performance. You know, and their arm slot, things like that, the stride off the mound. Same with hitters. I think that they're looking at their at bats. Swing and a miss. Lost speed pitch at 86 in Park. Out in front, one out. The batter's going to be Eduardo Escobar before he bats. We're going to pause 10 seconds, allow our stations to identify themselves. You're listening to Twins Baseball. Escobar, RBI on a ground out back in a two-run second inning. He has a homer, three RBIs on the spring. And Nova delivers up on away, ball one. Nova at 51 pitches. And Eddie Rosario still at first base. Sometimes you, as a base runner, you want to uh, maybe look in a dugout, talk to with your eyes to Paul Molitor, hey, I want to run. He has a good lead at first. There he goes, and the pitch is taken, throw down to second, not in time with a nice hit for a slide. They timed that one well, so Rosario. With a stolen base now in scoring position. Pitch was outside. Pitch for McCann to handle. The 
Twins can tie it up. Infield plays Escobar slight pull. Swing and a miss, boy. A cut piece there in on the hands. Outfield arms for the Yankees. Aaron Hicks, probably the best arm in center field. Little sets and now spins, but no throw on the pickoff attempt by the shortstop. A full house here. A lot of Yankee fans. Runs a fastball up and away. 92, three balls and one strike. Parking lot filling up early. Yankee fans showing up with their favorite jerseys. Teixeira, Alex Rodriguez did not make the trip. Beltron stayed back. Timeout called by Escobar. Too much time from Nova getting the sign. Nova battling CC Sabathia for that fifth spot in a rotation. 3 1 lifted down the left field line. Well foul. Nathan Evaldi looks to be a starter. Michael Pineda, CC Sabathia, Luis Severino, and Masahiro Tanaka. 24 starts, 112 ball games. He was the big. Sign from Japan, but say Tanaka, he had bone chips removed from his elbow in the offseason. There's a 3 2 line down the right field line. That's going to be just foul in front of that fastball. But if their starters hold up, I think they've got probably the depth and the best hard throwers in all of baseball in that bullpen. They've got three guys that are legitimate closers. Andrew Miller, one of them. Patances is another. And then the guy that Geraldus Chapman is not even going to be available to, I think, May 3rd. This one's lifted to center field. Hicks drifting back and now is going to get underneath it. He'll field it. Comes up throwing. Rosario's going to try and throw to third. Center field, Rosario taking a chance. And he got burned, so Hicks running off the field, taking a look into the Twins dugout right now. Great position. Hicks did everything right. One hop throw. And Henley with a quick hard tag to Rosario. They get one hit, nobody left, four complete. Three two Yankees. You're listening to Twins Baseball.
we start the top of the fifth inning. First pitch swinging. Is Torres, and he laces a base hit right back up the middle. So a leadoff single. Yankees up three to two. Twins out hitting. Yankees three to two. Gamble's going to bat. Pitch count at 64 over in Santana. No activity in the Twins bullpen right now. Also scheduled to pitch Kevin Jepson. Fernando Abad, J.R. Graham, Ryan Presley, and Brandon Kinsler, and Ryan O'Rourke. Which missed outside, ball one. Runner at first, and the pitch got the plate below. Yeah, the Twins get a ground ball double play. Nice play by Aaron Hicks out there in center field. Rosario had stolen second with one out. And a rule of thumb is you don't make the first third out at third base. You're already in scoring position. Rosario tagged up, tried it, bang, bang, play. Not only was it a strong throw, it was an accurate throw. One hop, Headley, easy play for him. Ground ball could be two. Doge to his left. He'll field it, and he'll go up to second base. Just one play there. That was almost like what Dozier wanted to do the play prior that he didn't come up with. He stumbled. He get an opportunity to do it again. That's kind of a Pat and Dozier play right now. I'm going back to Hicks and the defense, too, and certainly the, the home run saving catches stand out. But I think of one defensive play will always stay with me with Hicks as a twin that came against the Yankees at Yankee Stadium. In the rain, wasn't in it? In the rain, and he threw out Vernon Wells. And I know Vernon Wells, you know, isn't the fastest player in the game or wasn't the fastest player in the game, but still, Wells was trying to leg out a triple. And he takes it on the outside corner. There's a strike. And Hicks was uh, on the warning track, I want to say, in right center field, yeah. Danny. Mm -hmm. And he threw the ball, missed the cutoff, man. He said that the ball was wet, and it just left his hand. In the air the entire time, he threw out Vernon Wells from the right center field warning track to get Wells at third base. The throw in never hit the ground. Runner goes, and the pitch is taken. Throw down to second. High. Out into center field. And Buxton there to back it up. So we had a chance for Murphy to throw out a base runner and it was Gamble running. He'll be credited with a stolen base. A chance for Escobar to get up and it looked like a pretty good pitch to handle for Murphy. These are the things you want to see kind of grade out a player a little bit. And one thing they said about Murphy and it's almost turning into the, the, the John Ryan Murphy against the Aaron Hicks day today. There's a ground ball right side. Mauer's been busy down on one knee and has to hustle. Gardner almost beat that out. So Mauer has a ball to serve there with Santana with two down runner at third. Batter's going to be Aaron Hicks. Do you remember that throw he made, though? That, that yes, I that do. Was, that yes, what I remember about it, he was apologizing because he missed a cutoff, man. Well, that's one time that it doesn't matter because he's the guy that hit the ball. There's no other base runners behind him that could advance a run. But uh, pretty impressive, that throw. But like you said, it was sloppy track. Uh, Vernon Wells, but still. Bach called to Irvin Santana. That's going to allow a run in for third base. And Irvin knew it. Uh, he was in the, for some reason, to go in the stretch position with the runner at third. Had his glove on his left thigh and then started to come up a little bit. And then stopped, and you can't do that. So he'll be charged with a balk when that fourth run in. So Hicks pass, space is empty, dances out of the way, pitch down and in. But sometimes the runner at third base or a runner at second base, they'll go with a different sequence of signs. And sometimes you think, okay, when you, that's what I want to throw. You start your motion and the catcher's still putting signs down. And Hicks dances out of the way and that pitch inside at the belt. 
leadoff single, stolen base. Ground out and a ball. It's tapped off the foot of Aaron Hicks. And it bats to one ball, two balls and one strike. Santana will be a 71st pitch. And delivers down at the end. Three balls and one strike. Takes one of several former Twins, Danny, that are here today as a Yankee. Chris Parmalee, Anthony Swarzak, even Davidson Romero, whom we saw in spring training. And a walk to Hicks, so a little speed now on. And Mahler getting off the bench right now, talking with his pitching coach, going to find out if Bot is ready to come into this ballgame, possibly. You have to thank Hicks after making that throw and now a walk with two outs. He's thinking about 90 feet, isn't he? I would think so. You talk about Parmalee here with the club and Swarzak. Last year, Parmalee signed late with Baltimore. Signed late with the Yankees. Swarzak was with Cleveland also last year, or with Cleveland last year. Now with the Yankees. First pitch in there to McCann for a strike. Hicks getting the lead at first, not running. Ground ball right side. The pass now is going to be fielded by Dozier. And Santana covering. Nice play there by Irvin Santana. Yankees will add on. Pick up one run on one hit. Big balk called on Irvin Santana. Who scores the Yankees four? Twins two. You're listening to Twins Baseball. The Budweiser Roof Deck gets the ultimate target field experience, and you can book it for Labor and Independence Day weekends as well as April 13th up to 250 of your friends, family, clients, and much, much more. You can enjoy all the amenities, of course, the view, and of course, the ball game. All you can do is go to foodbaseball.com slash groups for more information. Ryan Murphy leads off first pitch. Nova's still out there. Delivers it high ball one. Ground out RBI by John Ryan Murphy back in that two run second inning. Twins led briefly two to nothing. And over right back. Missed outside. So two balls and no strikes. Nova battling for that number five starter spot in the Yankees rotation. Murphy most likely going to be the backup catcher to Suzuki. There's a strike on the inside corner.
Murphy skills behind the plate. Pitchers, you talk to them, they like throwing to them. And a 2 1 ground ball, third base, just foul. So two balls and two strikes. Murphy, three home runs last year. One of them was against Glenn Perkins, but I think what was lost in that was the day that Alex Rodriguez hit three. Two balls and two strikes. And a curve stayed inside. On the count for 3 2. Nova last year with the Yankees, 17 starts. Popped up behind home plate. McCann on the screen, and he's going to run out of room. The Yankees in 2012 had 28 starts with 12 and 8, but the ERA was a little over 5. The following year, 2013, 20 starts, only 9 and 6 ERA, just a little over 3. Last year, again, over 5. And a 3 2 pitch. This was tap foul. Spent a lot of time on the disabled list. Nova gets the sign, rocks and fires. Missed down and away. Good at bat there by Murphy. Lead off walk. It's the third walk issued by Nova. And here's Byron Buxton to bat. Buxton so far four for 21 this spring. Couple of RBIs. His ninth ball game. Sideline missed a few games with the flu. And Novit delivers nasty breaking ball right there on the outside corner. You wonder about Nova and the stuff that he has. It's electrifying fastball, good hard breaking ball. The consistency just isn't there for him. Timeout call. He has good size. Out on the mound, they've got him listed at 6'5", 235, 29 years of age, from the Dominican Republic. And a pitch foul. So Buxton in the hole, no balls at two strikes. Dozier in the on-deck circle. The Yankees leading 4-2. Once in a while, there are patches of sunshine here, but pretty much cloudy. Wind blowing a little bit out to right center field right now. The Yankees in town. Murphy at first, good lead. So on hit high in the air, left center field, long run. Gardner still chasing. Back on the track, and he won't make get there. Murphy going to be held up at third base. Buxton. Booming double to left center field. It looked like Gardner got there and just pulled up as that ball hit at the base of the fence. Good piece of hitting there by Byron Buxton. And now this should run into, turn into two runs here. He had nobody out second and third. Twins brand of baseball. Hit the ball on the ground right side. Move. Runner in, Murphy from third base. You move Buxton over to third and then let Maurer bat. There is activity just now starting in the Yankee bullpen. Line down the left field line, well foul. As that ball hit the wall off Buxton's bat. Immediately, I'm looking, where is John Ryan Murphy? Because he better start really running. With Buxton coming, his speed. And sure enough, Murphy got the third. Buxton was at second base with ease. 
Murphy was just hanging around, lurking around second base, waiting to see if Gardner was going to catch it. Once he saw it land, then he took off, and yes, second and third, nobody out. Good situation. So it's lifted foul to our right. So Dozier in the hole, no balls and two strikes. Brian Mitchell is the right hander warming, warming up for the Yankees. Those your bats. Nobody out second and third. Check swing there to see if he went. They said he did not. Those are held up. But Nova did 94 innings pitched last year. He walked 33, 63 strikeouts. And not a big strikeout guy. Slow tapper. That's going to go foul down the third baseline. Look to contend. They feel that wild card loss last year, one and done to the Houston Astros. They won 87 ball games last year. With that division, a lot of people still think that the American League Central is the toughest division. Division. Good players in that American League. East as Dozier pops it up. Shortstop has this. No chance for Murphy to tag up. So Dozier pops up. There's out the one. Yankees helping up their season on Monday, April 4th. And the team they were eliminated by, they will see again. And they'll probably see the same pitcher. I would imagine if it's not already out there, but probably is the Dallas Keuchel is going to start opening day. Is there... Saw young winner and shot so they out. couldn't hit Keichel in the postseason. They're yeah. going to try again game one. Somebody was saying that he's faced the Yankees three times and they have not scored a run off of him yet. But that doesn't mean much. There's a lot. I'm sure there's a lot of clubs out there like that. The premier players and Bauer Batch takes it up on away ball one. You I would imagine that, that Chris Sale knows exactly what his numbers were against the Twins last oh, year. Oh boy. I would imagine he is going to know exactly how well the Twins hit him. And who knows if that will motivate Sale. I would imagine it will this summer. And don't forget the Twins just so confident against City. Yeah. I mean, they, they, you ask them, they can't explain it. Strike call to Maurer. He didn't like that call. Do you think it was by design that the guys in the in the wild card playoff, the Yankees and Houston, and doesn't the Mets open up with Kansas City? Yeah. yeah. So that was kind of ironic that... At least we don't have to open up with Kansas City and see all that hoopla out there. That'll already have died down, hopefully. Nova goes off speed to Maurer and misses low. See the big orange carpet, though, again. Can't get enough of that in Baltimore on opening day. Let's hope they mix it up. You're talking about the orange carpet where they come, they come in from out center, center field, field and they... Hmm. I think they can do a little bit better than that. 2-1 to Maurer. Big swing and a miss. Chase up hard down in the end. Now here's you just want to put the ball in play. Two balls and two strikes. Well, Maurer doesn't chase that pitch too often. And the veteran of McCann behind the play. See if he kind of goes right back to that pitch. And a 2-2 on the way. Went off speed down and in, and Maurer laid off. Three balls and two strikes. Second and third one out. Twins trailing 4-2. Ground ball right side. That's going to sneak through for a base hit. Should score two. 
Murphy scores. Buxton being waved, no throw. And Maurer has tied it up with a single to right field. 4 4 tie. So Maurer with that base hit is going to send over to the shower. They've got. Brian Mitchell, right hander, going to come in from the Yankees. That's it for the Vondova. So the Twins have tied it up. One out now. We're at first. Bottom of the fifth inning. We have breaking the action. We'll be back. You're listening to Minnesota Twins baseball. New pitcher for the Yankees is going to be right hander Brian Mitchell. Selected by the Yankees 16th round 2009 draft. Last year he went 0 for 2. 0 and 2 with a save. ERA in the sixes. Had two starts, 20 appearances, 29 innings, 16, 29 strikeouts. Right field. Committed to go to the University of North Carolina, but instead signed with the Yankees. So, a young right hander comes on, and he'll be facing Miguel Sano. So know this afternoon he's walked and grounded out. Maurer at first drove in two has tied it up here in the bottom of the fifth. 4-4. And a first pitch. Breaking ball down and away ball one. Chanel with a homer. Four RBIs. In ten ball games this Grapefruit League action. Our sure lead at first. And missed little cutter. 93 miles an hour. Hitters count here. Two balls and no strikes. Mitchell made his major league debut in 2014 with the Yankees. A spot start. Swung on big cut. Fouled off right side. Looking for something on the ground. Outfield fairly deep against Sano. And lifted foul again. Boy, Sano not getting cheated. Had a couple of pitches to hit and just fouled up straight back. Twins today sending out a lineup that could be the opening day lineup in Baltimore. Suzuki would probably catch so Murphy on the bench Murphy's catching batting eighth pitch inside try to sneak that cheese by him and runs the count full three two. He's throwing that cutter and he's throwing a couple breaking balls early in the count. 
if he gets something to drive here. See if Mauer's running, he's not. And this one's sky to shallow right field. Went after him with a breaking ball and finally be caught by the right fielder. Gamble, there's two down. And Danny, you mentioned the Yankees bullpen and the, the three back end guys are going to be so tough. You know, Shreve is going to be in that mix as well. But outside of that, there is open competition taking place to finish off the Yankee bullpen. The guy pitching right now, Brian Mitchell, he is perhaps gunning for a long man spot. A young man who's had plenty of starts. The minor league level, 112 career minor league starts. But he may be a fixture in that Yankees pen for multiple innings. Pitch to Plouffe is low ball one. And it's, you know, it's funny because we were talking just the other day about what are the twins going to do because we don't really have that long guy in the bullpen every club usually has somebody that they designate as the long guy the first guy out early in a ball game and yes Mitchell here would be a nice piece for the Yankees as Plouffe takes it outside and now two balls and no strikes I'm not sure if the twins have that guy right now they've got depth in the bullpen from the right side Twins like the Yankees, like a lot of clubs, that fifth starting spot open. Strike. Tommy Malone, we had on earlier today, battling with Ricky Nolasco. You got to ask yourself if one of those guys wins out, is the other guy then better suited to pitch out of the bullpen? Bauer still at first, and will pitch high and tight, arches the back of Trevor. Well, a lot can happen between now and the start of the season. And there's also the trades. A lot of clubs at the end of spring training, if they don't have it in their system, send these scouts out. And there's a matchup. They'll make a trade. 3 1 on the way. And this was lined in the center field. Hicks. Routine for him as he two hands it, puts that one away. Twins will pick up a couple of runs on a couple of hits. They leave one after five. New score. It's the Yankees four, Twins four. You're listening to Twins Baseball. Santana gave up just two hits, four runs. Three of them were earned. Initial scoring there. Not sure about that, but he said three of them were earned. Three walks, a couple of strikeouts. So he'll give way to Abad. Abad making his sixth appearance. ERA is good, 1.69. Just five and a third innings, giving up five hits. 
One walk, three strikeouts. Try to win a job on the Twins bullpen. There's Henley. Takes it in there for a strike. The Bod does have big league experience. Several clubs last with the Oakland Athletics had two good years there. And right back down and in. Pod's ERA went up a little bit last year, just a little over four. 62 ball games he was in, 47 innings, and 45 strikeouts, 19 walks. That's those are the numbers the Twins like. Sky in the right center field. Buxton is not going to catch this one. He's going to have the warning track over the wall, and Headley with a leadoff opposite field double. Uh, against a bod, so and for the Twins tied it up. The Yankees get that leadoff guy. Here's Dustin Eckley. Now's the time here in camp when well one of the left-handed options outside of Glenn Perkins. He'll be in the mix. We know that the Twins All-Star closer, but will another lefty emerge, Danny, from a loaded pack? It has about four or five guys in that group of bods in that mix as well, but. If the Twins carry another lefty when they leave camp, now is the time for somebody to make a statement. You know, Corey, and we always talk about, okay, you always get a mulligan or two early in spring training. I'm not sure if there's any more mulligans left. There's a ground ball up the middle. Nice play there by Escobar, ranging to his left. But it does advance the runner Headley over to third base. So, Ackley doing his job at getting the runner to third base and scoring position. And here's Denorfia to bat. Especially a guy in the bullpen. This part of spring training, you are in shape, ready to go. These guys have been able to kind of get their bullpen sessions, and they're ready to come in. And now, meaningful games. In a situation here, runner third infield's in. And drops a breaking ball in there for a strike. Good pitch. And a bot, big league player, going against Chris Norfia. And this guy's a big league player. Leans that glove on that right thigh and now gets the sign. Change up Swan and miss. Good pitch. Denorfia with the Cubs last year, 103 ball games. Three home runs, drove in 18. In the hole here, no balls and two strikes. And a bot delivers, missed down and away. They've got a bod listed at 226-1 from the Dominican Republic, age 30. And a pitch over the plate low. Trying to get Denorfia to chase. You look at some of the numbers last. Well, since 2014, Abad is the third most left-hander in games behind Miller and Britton. There's a fly ball to Buxton. And the tag up the throw to the plate is high, but no chance. Henley held up. He took off from third base and then stopped as he saw that ball leave the hand of Buxton. Henley's not that fast, but at the same time, the throw was a little high, but I thought it was there plenty of time. So Abad doing a nice job and getting the second out. Even that runner at third to finish off Kozma here. Kozma, rough year last year. He was in 76 ball games with the St. Louis Cardinals. He did not have an extra base hit. No home runs, just drove in two, hit 152. And a punt pitch is high, ball one. Four four tie, top of the sixth. The Yankees with a leadoff double. 
Headley moved to third on a ground down. Then Denorfi a shallow fly to center. Couldn't play Headley. There's a strike call on the inside corner. Perez is in the on deck circle. Sets 1-1. One, one. Slow tapper down third, and that's going to go just foul as Ploof nears the bag. So we'll redo it. Look at Bod's numbers. We talked about also Ryan O'Rourke, another left-hander, will pitch later today. Ryan Presley scheduled to pitch. And Abad is a non-roster, so if he makes the club, they're going to have to find a roster spot for Obad. And I think the Twins, at the end of spring training, there's some guys that they could probably take off the roster and find a roster spot. There's a line drive, left center field. Buxton ranging to his right, reaches up. And he puts it away. Nice job by Fernando Abad, giving up the leadoff. Delta strands him at third. Five and a half complete, tied up 4-4 and four, you're home. Got us a good ball game. Twins Yankees doing it battle here today. The Twins will play the Yankees next Sunday up in Tampa. And the Twins will make one more trip up there to take on the Yankees at their ballpark. Here's Rosario first pitch swing, a little two hopper to the second baseman. So one pitch, Rosario's retired. Eddie with a couple of hits, scored a run. And here's Young Home Park. We're looking at Brian Mitchell as media guide here last year. He was placed on the seven day concussion disabled list August 18th. He was struck in the forehead. And as we started to look at it, it, it reminded me, yes, a line drive by Eduardo Nunez with the Minnesota Twins second inning of that ball game. Taken to a hospital. Hey. And a strike call to Puck. I saw where. Who's the Giants guy that they signed from Kansas City? Uh, Johnny Cueto. Cueto yeah. got hit in the head with a line drive the other day pitching with the Giants. As Park fouls it off right side. No balls and two strikes. And again, there, there's a manufacturer out there right now trying to get some of these guys, pitchers, to wear these uh, type of helmets. And they're more or less like a batting helmet that actually goes over the hat that you would wear. 
whereas sometimes you'd have an insert inside your hat. And Cueto said no. Hits down and away. Urban Santana tried. Yeah, and Cueto stays in the ball game on that, but Urban early in camp, Danny, before games began, he he put on that new hat, gave it a try. Yeah, a lot of guys say it's it's uncomfortable right now. Tap around in front of home plate, going to be fielded by McCann. Says it's fair. Park is going to be out at first base. Nice play by McCann to race out from behind the plate. And that ball had some spin on it and barehanded it before it was going to go foul. So pretty aggressive play to be able to dis discard that mass, fielded it, made a nice play. So two down bases empty, Escobar bats. We're on the bottom of the sixth inning. Five hits for the Twins, just three hits for the Yankees. Escobar takes a strike. Don't forget Twins baseball is brought to you. By the beaches of Fort Myers, Sanibel, find your island, find warm white sand beaches. Find the moments that always end too soon, but become memories forever. Visit FortMyersSanibel.com. Big swing and a miss. Boy, Mitchell looks good. Escobar and a hold of balls and two strikes. Never get too much of spring training down here with the beaches. And like we said, so many things to do down here. And he'll two. So on a foul tip, McCann hangs on. So Mitchell with a nice crisp one, two, three, and he completed six here at Century Lake Sports Complex. All knotted up 4 4. We'll be back here listening to Twins Baseball. Twins Flex Plan. It's going to give you the flexibility to choose your games and your number of seats. Choose in advance or even the day of the ball game. So don't plan. Flex Plan. All you have to do is go to twinsbaseball.com slash flex. Give them a call at 833 Twins to learn more. New pitcher for the Minnesota Twins right hander Kevin Jepson. Also Eduardo Nunez talking about him earlier at second base with Fredo Tovar. And the new shortstop and the new broadcaster. To my left, my partner. This is Corey Provis. Thank you, Danny. Jeff's it off for the fourth time. Three scoreless innings for the right-hander so far. This spring is Torres leads off the second baseman, takes high, ball one. Ronald Torres. Second base today. The Yankees' regular second baseman will be former Cubs Starlin Castro. Shortstop will be D.D. Gregorius. And now Jefferson's 1 0 is swung out and crushed to left in trouble. Going back on this one, Rosario. Rosario with the play on the warning track. 
Sounded good off the crack of the bat, but Rosario tracked it down over the shoulder catch on the track in left field. And Torres is out number one. Torres now two for three. Game tied 4 4 in the seventh. This is Ben Gamble. He's been on twice and scored twice. No official hit yet. Reached on an error. And a fielder's choice in the fifth. Stolen a base, and again, he scored twice. Jepson from the stretch. Sporting a bright red glove, and he pumps in a fastball at 92 for a belt high strike. Jepson a key cog back into the Twins' bullpen. He'll be the eighth inning setup man for Glenn Perkins if everything is even and healthy and everybody can go. And now the 0 1 off speed line near first and caught by Bauer. Joe positioned perfectly, playing well off the bag, almost in the hole on the right side. The steps to his right, and he made the catch for round number two. But Danny going back to that point, all things are even. Yes, Jefferson will have the eighth inning, as Brett Gardner will bat in a 4 4 game. But the parts could be somewhat interchangeable, say, if Jefferson goes two days in a row. That's to say that. Casey Fiend can't go in the eighth inning or possibly Trevor May in that same room. You know, Corey, you make a good point, and it's almost like the guys have two A teams out there in the bullpen, and you talk about Casey Fiend and what Trevor May did last year and Jepson, of course. So there's options there for Paul Molitor to be able to kind of get the same guys, same results out there with those guys, and then make sure you keep them fresh because if one guy does go a couple days in a row, then you know that third day it's going to be somebody else's job. Strike one called on Gardner. Go for two with a walk. Gardner, a first-time All-Star last year, had a great first half. He's at 33 home runs the last two years combined as Jepson misses off speed outside. Corey, what I like about all three of those guys, and even Perkins, so you've got four guys, they all want to be in that spot. They all want to be able to help the team. They love to compete. These guys, that's what they want to be. You know, some of the younger players, maybe not so much, and that, yes, they may say they want to be in that tight situation, but these guys do. And the 1-1, one -one, ground ball to short. Alfredo Tovar, the new shortstop, picks it between his ankles. Low throw dug out by Mauer. Tovar's made a few of those throws so far in the spring, and whoever's been at first base has been tested that time. Joe made a nice scoop to the back end. And a clean seventh inning for Kevin Jepson. Down to stretch, packed house in Fort Myers. Game tied 4-4 on your home for Twins Baseball. Spring Training Baseball is brought to you by Toyota. See where Toyota takes you. Test drive one at your Toyota dealer. Toyota, let's go places. We are Minnesota. We are Fox Sports North. Now today's seventh inning stretch was brought to you by Mayo Clinic Sports Medicine. From aspiring youth athletes to the pros, Mayo Clinic Sports Medicine is changing your game. Call today to make your appointment at Mayo Clinic Square in Minneapolis. Game tied 4-4, bottom seven. John Ryan Murphy leads off. 
Takes outside. Ball one from Brian Mitchell. Back out for his third inning of work. And he spins in a slider for a strike call to even things up on the Twins catcher Murphy. Murphy's been on twice. A walk, a run score. A fielder's choice RBI in the second as well. And the 1-1 is lifted foul. Slicing the seats off to our right. And now it's 1-2. Mitchell's been throwing hard since he came in. Up in the 90s consistently. Well, visited with Yankees manager Joe Girardi on the field before the game. And sure enough, John Ryan Murphy's name came up. And well, Girardi just had so many great things to say about the new Twins catcher. And a 1 2. He strikes out here. Foul tipped, and the catcher hangs on. That's not McCann. There's a new catcher for the Yankees. I think that's Gary Sanchez. And Gary Sanchez, the new catcher, hangs on. So Murphy is on number one. Game tied at four. Here's Buxton. So the first thing that Girardi said was he pointed, he took his index finger, brought it up to his head. He said, smart. He is a smart young man. And as Buxton bats, and he lines one foul to the right side. Smart young man, but he wears the tools of ignorance. <laughs> <laughs> Something doesn't add up, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, but uh, he is a great kid back there. And you know, like you said, sometimes they, they feel that maybe the, the hitting right now might be a, being affected. He's trying to learn the pitching staff here. Buxton flies on to shallow left. And the new left fielder no longer Gardner. Sunglasses on until his cat makes the catch. And that is out of the one. So Red Sox, I should say the Yankees rather making all sorts of changes. It's 79 in left field, and we're gonna go with Cesar Puello. So Puello made the catch there. We'll try to get to those changes here momentarily. Carlos Quinton's on deck. This will be Eduardo Nunez batting for the first time. Armley is at first base for the Yankees. Nunez, there's a strike call. The fastball at 97. Mitchell has looked good. Nunez having a great camp. He's played some short, some second. And now the 0 1 is outside, even some third. And Nunez not starting too many games. When he does get his at bats, he is reaching base. 4-4, bottom seven. Bases empty, two outs, and Mitchell's 1-1, one, one, way outside. At 98, fastball ball two. Irvin Santana started today, went five innings, four runs, three were earned. Walked three, struck out two. And the 2-1, Nunez flies to right center. And the new center fielder ranging to his left. He will call and catch, and that will end the inning. So Mitchell has seen eight batters and retired eight in a row through seven game still tied 4-4 on your home for twins baseball
Twins and the Yankees. Game tied 4-4. Here through seven, eighth inning, Twins have some defensive changes. First on the mound, J.R. Graham. Graham so far has logged four and two-thirds innings, two runs, both earned. He covers five previous appearances. And the young righty deals and Cesar Cleo bangs one deep to right. Mastriani at the wall, and Mastriani wants this one sailed into the seats for a home run. Cesar Pueyo going the opposite way out to right field. And with that, the Yankees have a 5-4 lead. And Pueyo wasting no time. Landing one. Drink rails and right. And New York leads 5-4. Let's head back to the Twins dugout. Pleased to be joined now by a man who worked an easy 1-2-3-7. Always good to visit with Kevin Jepson. How are you, sir? Good. How are you guys doing? Always great to chat with you as Gary Sanchez, the Yankee catcher, will step in. And Graham goes off speed. This is down low ball one. Before we get to, to your spring so far, Danny and I were just talking about you know, the previous inning when Brian Mitchell was throwing for the Yankees and Nunez, uh, sadly, you know, hit Mitchell last year in New York on a line drive and broke his nose. Mitchell's nose went to the hospital and we were talking about the new pitcher's hat that has that protective Kevlar or, or padding. Have you tried one of those at all just to mess with it at all here in camp? Uh, you know, I put it on. Um, it's kind of a different uh, design. Uh, it's, it's lighter than the ones they've had before. The top is open. Um, so the top of your head's exposed but, uh, you know, the the main areas where guys get hit, you know, the temples, all that is, is covered. It's just one of those things where it's a, it's a comfortability thing when you're out there on the mound. Um, you know, just having something foreign on, on your body that you're not used to is, is just, I think it's going to be a little too much for myself. Sanchez grounds out to the new third baseman, James Beresford. So one in, one out. Yankees lead 5-4. And the batter is going to be Davidson Romero, former Twins minor leaguer. He is batting for Chase Headley. And here comes Graham and the fastball. That 93 runs inside, ball one. Last year you were traded right at the deadline, came over from Tampa Bay. I know that first outing wasn't ideal, but I guess after that, did you find comfort with your role back into the Twins bullpen? Uh, I did. I did. Um, like you said, that first outing wasn't ideal. I think I walked the... Uh, the first two batters I yeah, faced. Yeah, nobody remembers. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, you know, as players, we have a hard time forgetting those ones. Um, but, no, after that, uh, you know, being traded in the middle of the season was kind of a whirlwind. You know, we're in Boston, and, uh, you know, I get a phone call from Kevin Cash, and, and uh, he had told me I'd been traded. So, you know, I run to the field, pack my stuff. You know, that later that night, I'm in, you know, Minneapolis. So, uh you know, after that, I felt like I, I got my, my bearings, and, uh, you know, then it's just baseball as usual. Um, we head out on the road, and, and uh, you know, then it's, it's, it's the same old thing. You're, you're getting to meet the guys and, and all that, but, uh, you know, it's, getting that first one out of the way when you've been traded is, is always nice. 2-1, strike two, good running fastball right inside on right-handed batting Romero, 2-2. Two and two. Kevin, has your role been the, 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 uh, designed or been uh, told what it is going to be this year? Um, it, it has. I've uh, Molly gave me a call in this off season and uh, you know gave me a heads up that you know Perk was going to be closing to start the year and, and uh, you know, it's always nice when you get when you get a little bit of a heads up uh, you know communication from uh, from manager. Obviously, you know I, I think as bullpen guys we all we all want to pitch that last inning, but uh, you know Perk's three time All Star. Um, you know, and, and his work uh, speaks for itself. So I think it just makes our bullpen stronger if everybody's down there just getting as many outs as we can uh, at the end of the game. And, and at the end of the day, that's what it's all about is, uh, you know, winning the games, winning the games, getting to the playoffs, and as we know, anything can happen once you get there. Curveball misses low ball four, so Romero walks. Yankees by one. And this is Chris Parmley. Homer Twin gets a nice hand as he will bat for the first time. Parmley now at first base defensively. Parmley a non-roster invitee here with the Yankees wearing number 24. 5-4 New York. We're visiting with Kevin Jepson. And the Twins dug out and worked a 1-2-3-7th. J.R. Graham here in the eighth inning. And a fastball pops in at 91 for a strike on Parmley. You mentioned that you enjoyed that ninth inning roll, but 
when you have the eighth inning and you have the eighth inning, you have the same mindset. You still kind of view yourself, even though you're not pitching in the ninth, but you still have that eighth inning closer mentality. Absolutely. Um, you know, I was told you know a long time ago when I was younger with with the Angels. Um, you know, by a guy named Scott Shields, who who worked that eighth inning and, and uh, was one of the best at it. He said, you know, you're, you're closing your inning out. Um, you know, just because you're not throwing the ninth, whether it's the sixth, seventh, eighth, you're a closer in that inning. You're getting your three outs, you know, and uh, passing it along to the next guy. Um, so you, you try to have that, that mentality and... and you know, it's, those innings are what, you know, win, wins and lose ball games a lot of times before you even get to that ninth inning. So, uh, as we've seen with a lot of teams going, you know, nowadays is they're putting a lot more emphasis on that seventh, eighth inning, which, uh, which is very nice. Parmalee grounds out as he broke his bat. Nunez, the second baseman, makes the play. So, two down, down to second base goes Romero. And the batter is going to be Eddie Rodriguez. A little bad in the DH spot. It was occupied by the Norfie. Kevin, we were talking with Tommy Malone earlier, and he said he's been helped out a lot by Neil Allen with that changeup here. Is he trying to get all the pitchers to have that changeup? Um, it's not that he's necessarily teaching a certain changeup as much as he's emphasizing how good of a weapon that pitch is. Uh, you know, Neil was with Tampa a long time. I, I was over with Tampa last year, and... It was kind of the same thing when I got traded over to Tampa uh, in spring training. You know, they sat down with me and, and basically just laid the numbers out for me of how how much that changeup helps me to not only lefties but righties as well. Uh, and Neil Neil's doing the same thing. He's he's just putting the numbers out there for you. You know, things you can't argue with of how much that pitch helps you and it's going to make it so much easier on you as far as pitching after that because it's another weapon that guys have to uh, respect. You know, from a hitter standpoint, yes. Now I have to worry about another pitch that this guy has and then sometimes you, you worry about that off-speed pitch and the changeup and all of a sudden that complements your fastball even more. Yes, correct, correct. It's, uh, you know, it, sometimes you're breaking stuff you know, can still be sharp, but you might not be able to get over for a strike as much. That changeup is a, a pitch that comes out, you know, as, as you know, just like a fastball. And, uh, you know, hitters, your hitters have to respect it. Line to right down the line. That's a base hit of the corner. Try for second base, and the throw from Mastriani's not in time. So with an RBI double, Eddie Rodriguez shoots one of the corner. That scores Romero, and the Yankees have scored again. And now lead 6-4. The Yankee fans who are here in Fort Myers can be heard. That's why you don't like them. <laughs> you know? So, you know, getting back to, to the pitches and what you throw, you hear a lot of the game today that a successful reliever only needs the command of two pitches. Is that not accurate? Does a reliever, a late inning specialist like yourself, really need more? I don't know that it's as much a need. Obviously, the more weapons you can have, uh, you know, the better. The, the difference is, is that... If you can't command your pitches for strikes, there's no point in having them. Um, and I think that's why you see so many relievers cut it down to, you know, three and two pitches is you need pitches that you can throw for strikes. Um, you know, you could have the best, you know, split or change in the game. If you can't throw for a strike, hitters, you know, throw it out the, out the window right off the bat. So um, I think the biggest thing for the relievers is we don't get a whole lot of work on the side as much as starters do to work on different pitches. So you kind of limit it down to uh, your, your best two or three. Um, you know, but uh, the more weapons you can have and throw them for strikes, you know, the easier it's going to be on you as far as making sure that you have at least a couple pitches every day that you can work in the zone. Strike two on Tyler Wade. Hey, before this inning does end, and I have to remind you, we're on radio and TV right now, but can you share a clean Eddie Guardado bullpen story? <laughs> Man, you're making it tough on me with the uh, yeah. the clean, the clean part of it. Um, we can edit it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've only been with Eddie a short time, um, but uh, it definitely feels like a lot longer because that guy down there never, you know, stops talking and uh, <laughs> you know always running his mouth. He he would today. He was telling us stories how, you know, he he always has black cars, black cars, black rims, black windows, and he gets mad that he always gets pulled over and racially profiled because the guy thinks that, uh, you know, a, uh, a Mexican in, in Southern California shouldn't be driving those cars. So, um, you know, typical lady stuff. Hey, Kevin, thanks for the time. Appreciate Absolutely. it. Thanks, guys. All right. All right, Wade grounds out to Nunez at second. With that, the inning is over, but the Yankees scored two runs on a couple of hits. They leave one. 
Seven and a half in now. New score reads Yankees six, Twins four, and you're home for Twins baseball. Take Kevin Jepson for his time. Yankees scoring two off J.R. Graham. Have a 6-4 lead, bottom eight. And Darren Mastriani leads off. And the new pitcher for the Yankees. Former twin right-hander Anthony Swarzak. And Brian Mitchell pitched very well. Two and two-thirds scoreless. He faced the minimum. This is coming in for Nova with two outs, or one out rather, in the fifth inning. And Swarzak misses down low off speed. One ball, one strike on Mastriani. Parmley now playing. Hicks started today in center. And now Swarzak and Davidson Romero also into the game. And the 1 1. Strike 2 on Mastriani. Danny mentioned that Swarzak started last year with the Indians. But he ended up finishing 2015 pitching in Korea. And the 1 2 had the plate missed down low. And Swarzak went off speed on the bearded Mastriani 2 and 2. Mastriani doing everything he can to win a spot. He's been solid. And it's Swarzak 3 and 1. Beresford on deck. And the pitch is cracked in the air to right center in the alley. Silva in right racing in the alley. Won't get it. Base hit up against the wall. Mastriani's got two. He'll stop there. Good start. Lead off double. Mastriani is on base again. Here's Beresford. He's down by two. And if you're wondering, Swarzak, he was not on the same Korean team as Young Ho Park. He was on the same team, though. As Baltimore's left fielder, he Su Kim. And also, Davidson Romero also played on that same Korean team at times last season. So now Beresford wins down by two. And Swarzak pumps in a strike. Fastball at 92. And for so many years, Swarzak was an important piece as just that long man. If the Twins had a rough start, you know, Swarzak would go out there and chew up three or four innings. And the 0 1. Cued on the ground at third. A diving, sprawling stop made by Romero. Straightens up and throws him out. Good play. Davidson Romero over near third, went down to his right to the backhand side. And so many times you see a defensive player slide and throw that ball away. But not Romero. That was a perfect throw to Parmalee. And Mastriani could not advance and remains at second base. One out. And Swarzak, Danny, he could not have the same success for some reason as a starter. 
As a reliever, the numbers were very good. But when he would get that spot start, it just would not it would not work out. And he didn't make any excuses either. He was a guy that would take the ball and get out there. But, you know, he really probably didn't get the chance to kind of stretch out and kind of prepare knowing that I'm going to go into the season as a starter. And every fifth day it's going to be my job because the mindset's a little bit different than, okay, I come to the ballpark every day, I could be using the bullpen, and then all of a sudden, hey, there's a spot start. Swing and a miss. Carlos Quinton on a slider. One ball, one strike. 6-4 Yankees in the eighth. This guy's having a good spring here, Carlos Quinton, yeah. especially lately. Swinging a hot bat. Had a big home run the other day, but playing some first base. And it's one thing the Twins are looking for is that swing guy that can play some first base. Yes, Park can play there. Swarzak from the stretch. Mastriani off second. Now time called. Twins plan on leaving camp with a four-man bench. That's the plan for now. And John Ryan Murphy, backup catcher, he'll be there. Eduardo Nunez will be there. And Danny Santana out of options. He's in the mix, as is Arcia out of options. And the 1-1. One -one. Swag and a miss. Fooled. Quinton that time with a biting slider down and away. It's 1-2. and two. Quinton, non-roster, he has had a good camp. The guy on deck, non-roster, Ryan Sweeney has looked sharp at times as well. And not to discount the guy at second base either in Mastriani. So some decisions looming. He's down two in the eighth. And the one-two outside. Shot the corner, missed not by much at 94, two and two. Gary Sanchez, the catcher, trying to bring that ball up a little bit. Look low. And swing of the bat could tie this game up. Quinton. Mastriani at second base. In the eighth, one out. And the 2-2. Check swing, line foul. Swarzak is not on the roster. His ERA in the spring is right at three, so he has put his name in the hat to win a bullpen spot. And much like the Twins, there are bullpen spots to be had with his Yankees team. In fact, the guy behind the plate right now, Gary Sanchez, he's competing to back up McCann. Two and two on Quinton in the eighth. And here's the pitch. is popped up right near the mound. And Swarzak will call and catch. Round number two. So many times you see pitchers just say, get out of the way, let an infielder catch that ball, and I'm always stunned as to why a pitcher can't catch a pop-up. Play like that, in fact, Burnt Dunsing and the Twins, I think, in a game last year, but you know, Swarzak just one step off the mound, first base side, easy play that he's made since he's been about 10. Well, yeah, but they don't practice that too often. And that ball, the fact that it wasn't hit that high didn't allow the corner guys to get in there, so Swarzak recognized that. Slider strike back toward that slider to Sweeney 0 1. So, leadoff double, Mastriani still there, still at second base. Now it's up to Sweeney with two outs. Left handed batting outfielder and the 0 1. Brown ball up the middle. The shortstop, Wade, with glove behind the bag at second. He throws out Sweeney and Swarzak works around a leadoff double. Twins do not score. They leave one. Ninth inning coming up. So are the Yankees who lead 6 to 4 on your home for Twins baseball.
batter for the Yankees is Abiato Alavino, the second baseman. As Ryan Presley begins the ninth inning with a curveball, strike called on Avalino, 6 4 New York. Presley, a strong camp. The right hander coming off injury last year, and the 0 1 is flared to right down the line. Slicing foul, Mastriani chasing, and no play as it finds the berm down the right side, 0 2. We go, Presley! And Presley brings in velocity, he brings in some experience. Six hitting so far, just one run. That came at a home run to Adam Jones in a recent game in Sarasota. He has struck out six, walked three. Oh, and two in Avellino. And here's the pitch. is tapped on the ground, foul behind the plate. But Danny, if there's another right-handed spot out of the Twins' bullpen to be had, Presley's making a strong case here so far in camp. You know what, Corey? And if they don't go with a left-hander, then Presley's probably the guy. If they do decide to go... With another left-hander out of the bullpen, then I think Presley's on that bubble list there a little bit, but he's pitched well. They like what he can do here. He can give you more than one inning. And the 0-2 tapped up the first base line. That's going to be fair. Loved by Quinton. Easy play to the back for round number one before Silva bats. We have reached the bottom half of the hours. So let's step out. Ten seconds for station identification. You are listening to Twins Baseball. Corey Danny from the Century Link Sports Complex. 6 4 Yankees in the ninth. One out for Juan Silva, the right fielder. The leg kick and the pitch, and that's lifted foul above the screen behind the plate. Nothing at one. Visiting with Neil Allen before the game today, Twins pitching coach. And Presley's name came up, and, and the subject was about slide steps and. Presley was a name that Neil mentioned quickly. It's a much improved slide step. That Presley has been working on, and he's not alone. That's That's been an important message from Eddie Guardado, Neil Allen, from day one down here. And the 0-1 is a breaking pitch in the dirt. One ball, one strike. You can see why, Danny, is that was a, that was a problem again last year. Opposing teams had so much success running on the twins and you can't always blame the catcher yeah and you can't always blame one particular guy i think it was a group thing but it's been addressed a little bit last year but more so this year and i think the players recognize it and all they're asking you to do is look at first base see if that guy is a base runner if he is a guy at first base that will steal a base and then you just got to be able to incorporate that slide step throw over there a little bit more but you know if, if there's a problem with it then sometimes the manager then can kind of help out and maybe call those pitch outs, which a lot of guys you talk to them, they don't like to do that. Ball and two strikes on Juan Silva. 6-4 Yankees in the ninth. Base is empty, one out. And the pitch is flared to left near the line. Sweeney in on his feet, makes a chest high catch. And the two down. The live Twins baseball is back in 2016 with MLB.com at bat on your smartphone or tablet. Stay connected with the Twins all season wherever you are with live radio broadcasts, stats, breaking news, and more. Download MLB.com at bat, the number one app for live baseball. Two down, ninth inning. And this is Dustin Fowler, the center fielder batting. As he lines one softly center field, and Danny Santana charging won't get it, base hit. As it lands between three twin defenders, and now Carlos Quinton jogging in from first base to cover second. A whole lot of red shirts out there in shallow center field. In fact, six twins defensively converged, and Quinton, I think, wisely got to second base. Otherwise, yeah, Fowler might have an easy 90 feet. Yeah, a little bit. Uh, you, know, you like the effort, all the guys going out there, but somebody does need to get back to second base, and Beresford was there. The pitcher Presley got there. Quinton got there. So it was covered. Well, the big hit in this game came from the guy batting right now, Cesar Pollo. Hit a home run to right off J.R. Graham in the eighth inning. Gave the Yankees a 5-4 lead. They added one more in an RBI double from Eddie Rodriguez. Pueyo batting takes high ball one from Presley. So a two-out single for Fowler. The running game still may be in play here. Ninth inning. Off speed is lined foul off the screen. A slider from Presley. One ball, one strike. 
Yeah, Presley's season ended last year due to injury, a torn lat muscle. And he did so throwing a pitch at around 98 miles per hour. And he tried to rehab, tried to come back, but then had a setback during that program and was shut down the rest of 2015. The 1-1 is bounced foul past third. And now it's 1-2 on Cesar Pueyo. Yankees by two in the ninth. Fowler at first, two outs, one and two the count on Pollo. And here it comes, and he bounces foul as Presley again went off speed slider that time. And fighting that one off was Pollo. Twins have a home game here tomorrow. We will not broadcast that one for you, though. Kyle Gibson and Juan Nicasio going for the Pirates. 12.05 Central Time game. Nicasio. Let's make it a run. Pittsburgh rotation. And the one-two runner goes. The pitch is lifted foul. Nicasio had a recent start for the Pirates. How about this? Had a recent start against, I think it was Baltimore. And the Orioles had their good lineup out there. He went four innings. He allowed one hit. No walks. He struck out ten. In four innings against a good Baltimore team. Mm -hmm. So with that, the former Rocky is in the mix to be a Pirate starter to begin the year. So Gibson tomorrow and turns host the Pirates. Our next broadcast will be Saturday. And we'll be here. One ball, two strikes on Cesar Pueyo. 6-4 Yankees in the ninth inning. Pollo doesn't go. The pitch got him swinging. And the slider spiked it. And Pollo chased. Inning over. Yankees get a hit. Do not score. Leave one. Last wraps. Twins are down by two. 6 4 New York. On your home for Twins Baseball. By two last wraps. Six four Yankees bottom half of the ninth inning. Sold out crowd today. Well over 8,000. Overcast, but it's been nice. Temperatures in the 70s. A lot of rain yesterday and even more rain early this morning. Great afternoon here. Oswaldo Arcia trying to spark a rally. The new pitcher for the Yankees. Is a right-hander, Johnny Barbado. He drops in a hook, curveball strike one at Arcia. Who is putting together some good at-bats. 
recent games, both big league side, even on the minor league side. And the 0-1 is bouncing the ground to the right side. The shift and the second baseman from shallow right makes the play. It's Avellino. And Arcia grounds out, one down. It's Wilfredo Tovar, the shortstop. Offensively today, Joe Maurer had a two-run single back in the fifth inning to tie the game 4-4. Twins led 2-0 after two. As Tobar looks at a fastball strike at 96. Good choice RBIs in the second from Eduardo Escobar and John Ryan Murphy. Then the Yankees came back with three runs in the third. Two were earned. And the 0-1 runs outside. Miguel Sano, a fielding error, dropping a ball in right. Part of that three-run third. Aaron Hicks today with a sack fly RBI and his return to Fort Myers as a Yankee. And the 1-1 is lined to short and a diving stop made with a shortstop to his feet. Low throw dug out in time for out number two. Well done all around. A sinking line drive to short, and Wade went down to his legs to glove it on the short hop. A low throw, but Parmley smooth defensively in the back end at first, made a clean pick. And that is out number two. Well defended all around. Play goes 6-3, two down. Hit hard. And a good play by Wade at short. So it's up to John Hicks, the catcher, as he's behind a strike, going one John Hicks. That's right-handed. And the 0-1. Swing and a miss. Not close. On a breaking ball that bounced a few feet in front of home play. Nothing in two. Well, this game was tied 4-4 until the Yankees struck for two in the eighth. With J.R. Graham pitching. Cesar Pollo homer to right. Eddie Rodriguez RBI double. And that's the difference in this game. The Yankee two-run eighth. 0-2 on Hicks. And the pitch high, ball one. Johnny Barbado, the pitcher. And the one two Hicks is gone. He strikes out swinging, and the Yankees win the game six to four. Twins fall to nine and eight. Yankees now eight and nine as the Yankees prevail by two, six to four. We're back with more next on your home for Twins Baseball.